Unstructured data is really becoming a nightmare for data centers to manage. It's growing at unbelievable rates. And, and I don't think anybody's surprised at the, the amount of unstructured data that they're dealing with, but the rate of growth is unparalleled to what we've seen in the past. I've invited John from Aparavi to talk through this with me. John, thanks for uh, joining us today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, George. So, John, what we see here is, you know, 25 years ago when I was 12 and started in the industry, right, we were worried about Oracle databases and Microsoft SQL, and the, yep. the focus there was like availability and how quickly can I get in, get yeah. the backup done, yeah. and we thought big was, you know, 200 gigabytes, right? right, right. And, and, you know, Files were usually user files, and it, it was almost you sort of protected them when you could. It wasn't that big of a deal because they're just silly users anyways, right? Yep. But now what we've seen is this massive growth in unstructured data. And I don't know exactly when the point of cross was, but certainly about 10 years ago, this started to become the bigger problem, right? Because, and I think, you know, obviously number one is growth. And the other thing is just quantity of files, right? Just the oh, yeah. number of files that we have to deal with yep. is enormous. And that what we see is like, take data protection example, typical data protection products just trip all over the, the number of files, just backing them all up and things like that. And yep. we've seen people have to resort to like image backups, which has their own problems. Of Are course. you guys seeing similar stuff? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that really is the genesis for Operavi, right? Is, is we were working all at legacy backup companies and, uh, you know, as, as discussions came about, uh, we recognized that th there's a massive problem here, um, not only today and right now, but also the future, right? And, and we talked about a little bit, the, the traditional solutions are not preparing data for the future at right. all. They right. I think that's a really good point. I, I think that what I try to tell people is like, what we're experiencing right now, if you think it's bad now, <laughs> it's yeah. nothing compared to, I, I just read a thing the other day that, that by 2020, there's gonna be like 20 billion or 40 billion devices connected to the internet, all generating data, right? So Absolutely. The, the amount of this is unbelievable. The other thing that we've seen as a fundamental change here is locations, right? Now mm -hmm. we have this thing called the cloud that really gives us a whole nother thing that we have to deal with, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have to deal with that, but the other thing you have to deal with is multi-cloud. Right. Right? Where you've got uh, one organization leveraging multiple clouds for, for different solutions, right? Or you even have you know, users out there doing their own thing because management isn't providing the, uh, the right path. Yeah, and I think the other thing we've seen here is also the, the justification for this uh, retention of this data, right? And again, back in, in that era, we could just say, well, delete it. Yeah, and, right. And, and now you can't do that. Or no. you, you, either through regulations or just corporate governance, yep. there's legitimate reasons to keep all this stuff, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, with, with now the uh, prevalence of you know, machine learning AI, people are wanting to keep things data longer to learn from it, uh, see trends. Uh, we actually see some customers who say like, I never want to get rid of anything, right? Uh, legal is, is, a, is a big thing there, aerospace, another thing uh, mm -hmm. from, from external regulations, so yeah. You know, what we're seeing here is, is legacy solutions, especially in the data protection, but even in archive, uh, are really just falling short. They're not, they weren't written in an era to deal with this kind of growth in a multi-cloud thing. Obviously, you guys, as you said, were ver are very focused on this. What are you guys doing differently here to help hand manage this problem? Yeah, so first thing I think is the engine, right? We built this net new for this world, right? And, and not just for the world today, but the world for tomorrow, right? We, we saw that there was a need and that the current solutions were not addressing it. So Operabi leverages a uh, web-based SaaS platform and this platform defines all your policies. It sets the engines. Um, you know, it tells everything what to do, right? Uh, we also have a uh, on-premises uh, software appliance, um, but you could also, you know, host that in, in an EC2 environment if you if you like. Okay. And then we actually do uh, treat uh, uh, the the data source itself. And all these operations together, uh, we we are able to to do uh, you know near CDP uh, type availability uh, with just rapid recovery. And you know, it sounds like I've got uh, recoverability capabilities both on-prem and in the cloud, is that right? Yeah, so if you are a, uh, aggregating data in the cloud, uh, you absolutely can, can recover data uh, in that cloud environment, yeah. Okay, great. And then what's the, what's the scale that you guys are designed to handle here? 
Yeah, so it, it really was built to scale uh, into the petabytes of, of data, uh, billions and billions of, of, of files. Uh, traditionally, yeah, we've seen organizations do a walk the file system approach every time they're right. looking to do you know uh, deltas or differences. Right. Uh, we actually built it, uh, so you only have to do that once, and you, and you do it on-prem, right? You don't have to continue going back over and over and over. So that means these, these uh, protected copies can occur very, very quickly, and I'm only transferring a very small amount of data? Yeah, uh, we actually uh, go down uh, to the to the block or uh, byte level in some circumstances. So let's talk about how you guys clean out after yourself. I mean, we don't want this to become the next big growth tier, right? Right, absolutely. So uh, we have a few different uh, types of data movements. We do uh, checkpoints that uh, actually are, uh, think of it as like a temporary recovery cache, right? Okay. And this is uh, uh, data held on, you know, disk here, direct attached. Uh, and then you can schedule those to run every you know, five, 10 minutes, up, up to you. Uh, 15 minutes is usually the norm, what we see. And then we'll actually put a snapshot uh, of, of the entire disk contents, whatever you've selected by the, the policy defined uh, up here, uh, onto the appliance, the software appliance here. And once that happens, we will remove all the data that we've aggregated through those, those checkpoints. Okay. The next level is we can actually do archives to, to cloud. And when we do an archive out to cloud, uh, the same very thing happens. You define how many versions of a snapshot you want to hold here, if it's one, if it's five, um, and then we'll start you know, incrementally cleaning up behind ourselves uh, once that data is, is up into a cloud location. Okay, great. Yep. And then from when I go to recover, I just go to the most logical location to get the data back then? Yeah, so uh, that'll all happen from, from the UI directly, okay. and, and you'll determine you know, where you want the, the data from. We actually do point in time recovery, uh, so you're able to select a, a date and a time, and the software is going to define, uh, based on, on what it knows about your data, okay. where it's going to be recovering from. So if it knows it has to go out to an archive or a snapshot or a checkpoint. Okay, now, you've you. used the word archive a couple times. It sounds to me like you guys are setting a good foundation for an archive here. Yeah, absolutely. By the way that we're placing data into the cloud, we're actually um, able to to archive that at a very, very granular level. Okay. Um, one of the, the key things that we can do is we can actually, uh, by policy, remove data out of the cloud um, and then all the way back down through uh, to make sure that you're freeing up your primary storage your secondary storage, and then you, you verify that you've got that in, in archive. And as soon as its retention policy is hit, even if it's an incremental change, we can remove those individual blocks or bits, as opposed to having to you know wait until the entire image expires. Right, and that's going to help with things like GDPR and things like that, where we're going to have to get really granular with retention and protection. Absolutely, you know we've got a search capability built in where we can actually search by you know content or by you know metadata um, by author and and actually start to remove remove okay. that data. So if, if I'm a, a, one of our viewers and we're watching this, this all sounds good, but I've got, a, I've, I've definitely got some sort of legacy backup, everybody does. W what, give me the reasons that would motivate me to, to switch and go to Upper Avi. I mean, storage growth is gonna be one of them, right. obviously, right? Uh, by, by way of how we're doing this architecture, we've modeled out that we can save 75% of storage over you know, a seven to 10 year retention period, wow. right? So when you're talking about uh, this issue, which is only going to get worse, right? Right, uh, and obviously this issue equals this issue, right? You know, so at the end of the day, Operavi is going to save you massively in secondary storage, okay? Uh, and it's also going to clean up behind itself all the way back down to to the the primary data once we archive it off for you, okay? Um, the other thing is we built the platform uh, completely open. We use an open data format. Uh, okay. So that means you're not going to get locked into Operavi in 10 or 15 years, right? Okay. There's no vendor lock-in with Operavi. We'll have, we have an open source public reader, documented DLLs, uh, all of that. The other thing we do is we end cloud vendor lock. Okay. And, and how we do that is we actually allow the free movement of data uh, between different clouds and even back down on premises if you wanted to. Okay. Right. So our our software fully manages kind of the orchestration of data over a lifetime. So uh, say you want your data to go to you know Amazon S3, mm -hmm. but then after that you want it to go to a group like Wasabi, for right. example. We fully support Wasabi. Uh, maybe your IBM Bluemix, uh, Cloudy and Scality, all of these guys we've we've gone through and certified against as well. Um, so my big takeaway is uh, we're going to save you money, big on storage over a seven to 10 year retention period. Okay. Um, and by nature of how we've architected the solution and how you can run through multiple clouds, uh, we're actually able to uh, end cloud lock-in, right? Okay. Uh, so vendor lock.
There's my lock. That's perfect. Yeah. The uh, the other thing is Opera is an open data format. Okay. Uh, and so we've published the, the reader, we've published the DLLs. And what that means is not only do we add uh, and uh, cloud vendor lock, we end software vendor lock because okay. you don't need us to recover your data. It, it's fully accessed. So we, we end lock in a, in a few ways. And again, lastly, with these three storage operations, checkpoints, snapshots, and archives, we can provide rapid recovery with near CDP availability. Awesome. Well, John, thanks very much yep. for joining us today. Yeah, I appreciate it. There you have it. If you're looking to uh, save money and vendor lock-in and improve the availability of your unstructured data set, check out the guys at Apparabi.